Yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, they they fired the wrong Star Wars director this week. Yeah. They yeah. sure did. They so sure what you guys are referring did. to is yeah. uh, oh. the director of Star Wars Episode Nine mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. one. The Colin conclusion Trevor. of the new trilogy. The conclusion yeah. of the new trilogy. The, trilogy. Yeah. Uh, the guy Colin they Trevorrow. hired. Be, yep, Colin so Trevorrow. So Colin, this guy named Colin Trevorrow, who most of you know uh, for directing Jurassic World, had directed one uh, film prior to that, the thoroughly okay um, <laughs> film uh, uh, Safety Not Guaranteed, uh, who already was kind of even when getting the Jurassic World gig seemed like kind but of really a big long shot. Really stretching his yeah, as it turns capacities. out, like, yeah, his capacities and Jurassic. World did we not call it living well. on borrowed time. So, mm. but here's the thing: here's the reason. For all the reasons I just, for all the reasons I just said before, it's hard to blame someone like Colin Trevorrow for the how bad Jurassic World is because you know that you know it's like how much control did he actually have over that movie? Who knows? Well, Colin Trevorrow decided that <laughs> after Jurassic World, he was going to go out and and make make a movie just for him. <laughs> And he went out and he made a film called The Book of Henry, a film that uh, thus far has been kept from uh, people's eyes for a, long, for a few months. I think the release date was pushed back or a couple of things. Mm-hmm. But it premiered at LAFF uh, this week and caused quite a stir. It premiered at LAFF and uh, it is apparently a disaster yes. of a movie. Yeah. It is apparently it is a it is a legendarily who bad. Thought, who could have thought? Looking at that wonderful yes. trailer. Yes. <laughs> yes. So that's right. We did we never, do the trailer? We never talked no, about we it. Never I talked about it on the trailer Instagram right. because the trailer Ooh, okay. is is bananas. It's one of the worst things I've ever seen. Yes. And 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 this like the the idea. I watched that trailer and I thought this is clearly just a bad job of communicating the. Various threads. No, Apparently, that is a great, that is a great indication of communicating what the it fuck that film is. a great job about. of communicating what's going on. So apparently, uh, the the everything I've heard about this movie because I I have not seen it and will not see it. And is, I want to interject uh, periodically to say this movie that is the that is directed by the man who is directing Star Wars Episode Nine. Yes. Continue. This, this it's mm-hmm. uh, it's a. It's basically a movie about this kid Henry, who's like a omnipotent super genius yeah, yeah, yeah. who talks down to everyone around him, and it's like a combination of uh, super genius kid is awkward with everyone but his family, uh, like you know, uh, like disease, sudden disease strikes down family members. Yeah. Movie uh, like and the, and, and, and the molester next door, the molester next molester door, next door and, and the kid murder and, and the murder, murder plot. plot. Yeah. And okay. So. I, I was supposed to see it earlier this week for reasons I did not. I'm still going to try and do it before it's gone, although I think it's gone this week. Yeah. But from what I've gathered like of what the plot of this movie is, it is super smart know-it-all kid. Uh, has like for the first thirty minutes of the movie, like a like a nice like girl next door kind of like growing up, you know, thing or whatever. Uh, fucking dies. Mm-hmm. But then through. Through instructions he has given his mother on an iPod. Wait, he dies? Yes. <laughs> yes. He <laughs> fucking <Spoiler>. dies. <laughs> um, Spoiler alert, guys. We're so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah whatever. Uh, through <laughs> through instructions he has given to his mother on a fucking iPod, instructs Can her we to get the murder. Trailer onto the screen, by the way, because the money <laughs> shot is coming. In. Oh, oh, it's true. I, uh, this is true. Wait, which one? The very last shot of the trailer. Oh, yeah. we have. I think we so have some through time. through audio through an iPod, right? Yeah, through that iPod. iPod. We see her through the, the iPod. fucking iPod. That's proof that you're not lying. And, and uh, has has <laughs> predicted literally every, every move of every person involved. Yes, in and has created this Rube Goldian, Rube Goldbergian thing. <laughs> sort Rube of way. Goldberg. Yeah, yeah. Rube Goldberg machine of. Murder. murder plot. Yeah. He wants his mother to but the, from the treehouse in his backyard yeah. snipe the molester neighbor. That's, That's right. Sound like with, a, the money with a fucking sniper rifle. <laughs> yeah. With a silencer too. <laughs> Where'd she get a that, silencer? That, that, that plot That's, doesn't sound like that needs that much uh the trailer, planning. The trailer starts with the child talking to his classmates uh, in school. Yes. And it ends with Naomi Watts with holding a, s- a fucking sniper yes, rifle. Yes, and as funny as that sounds, if it were self-aware, the idea the biggest thing I have read is just that apparently the film is so wildly fucking tone deaf that it's it we it takes this odd 
odd idea and approaches it as if it's basically like a, a feel good lifetime movie about <laughs> yeah. like family values or, or something and like Amazing. wildly exposes Colin Trevorrow as someone who does not know what he yes. is doing. Yes. Now here's the thing is that with Colin, Colin Trevorrow said uh, in, while promoting Jurassic World that he had spent uh, a grand total of six weeks on a film set prior to getting the Jurassic World gig but Jurassic World was a great film school for him. It was so, like grad school you know yeah. for like making a blockbuster. Yeah, yeah exactly and that is uh, troubling uh, and uh, so here's the qu- I asked uh, I asked one of our coworkers Paul yep. uh, who um, also <laughs> is a filmmaker yep whose taste in film I don't necessarily always agree with mm-hmm. because he, for example, enjoys the movie Prometheus. Yes, which is, um, which is mm, a intolerable mm, pile of garbage. Yeah, an intolerable opinion. Um, and so... <laughs> <laughs> intolerable <laughs> opinion. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, wars have been fought the, uh, for less. The, uh, <laughs> the sequel less. to Intolerable cru- Cruelty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I asked Paul, and I'll, I will present the same question to you guys. Mm-hmm. If the trade-off is we lose the Han Solo movie directed by Lord and Miller, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but we also have Colin Trevorrow replaced, mm-hmm. if that's the if mm. that if those things end up coming together, mm-hmm. was it worth losing the Lord and Miller? But no, here's Solo but here's but together. here's the thing. Here is the thing. I think uh, I think that you are looking at these two things as being separate when in fact they are a part of a unity uh, of mm-hmm. sorts, which is. Uh, and some of the, I'm, this is not my opinion. It is something I read earlier, but it, it struck me in that moment is someone said, I, I said, w- maybe these Star Wars films deserve the Colin Trevorrows of the world because, mm-hmm. you know, they want journeyman directors and I think they could do better than him. But I'm saying that people who are there to say yes and there to deliver the just to as act as a conduit to deliver the vision of the producers and deliver the vision of the studio so when you say like well clearly they're cleaning house over there they're going to get rid of the visionary Lord and Miller and Colin Trevor no I think they're getting rid of the visionary Lord and Miller learning their lesson and realizing they need to stick with more people like Colin Trevorrow I think mm-hmm. that's what we're which learning which is just I'm such a such a garbage thing because seriously under the same umbrella under the same corporate umbrella it's like you know the Marvel movies, not perfect, right? Yeah, but taking a wildly different approach to yeah. like they're getting more experimental as they go yeah. along. Yeah, yes. I think they're, they're taking just, they're doing it the learned. right yeah. way. Yes. The wrong lesson was learned. Yeah. Part of the uh, part of what came out of the Marvel universe is the idea that you don't have to pay Steven Spielberg thirty million dollars to direct a movie and yeah. have it be good. You can pay an independent film director yes. nothing. And kind of shove him around yeah. and make an okay movie out yeah. of it. And he will and serve his purpose. And it'll buy you some goodwill. He will have no leverage. And in the event that the film doesn't work, no one's career. On yeah, you can yeah, blame yeah. it on him because no one's career was really affected. What does this tell us about episode eight? Um, well, then that's the thing. Is well, that that's episode eight was episode oh, it's almost the opposite. Yeah, yeah. episode eight it's was a great, is a good visionary filmmaker who's going to come in here and hopefully I have like honest, wrote I don't the goddamn know. script himself. Yeah. Like you know, his, is it wait, is with it with Cast on, yeah. and JJ Abrams to make yeah. sure that there's continuity between mm. what he wanted to and do. And then, but and then, like the weird thing was like, initially, if I, I, I might be wrong here, I can't remember. But like initially, he was supposed to write the script for episode nine, and then is not anymore. Mm, yeah, which is I just hope they let Colin Trevorrow write it yes. at this point. Mm. Uh-huh. Just really go all in on it. Uh, oh, boy. Was that by the way, Book of Henry? That was purely an auteur work of Colin no, Trevorrow. Someone no, else wrote, someone else wrote it. Oh, someone else wrote so it. He read that and said, "That's someone a good idea." Someone wrote it, and he was he, <laughs> he went read the, the script and said, "I right. want to make this." Just oh shit! No, that 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 gets onto the the idea. I think is the perfect idea. Someone should do. Someone should do. A Gus Van Zant style remake, like the remake of Psycho, of Book of Henry. Yeah. But with same script, every single word. Possibly the same shots, oh, but I think with the same script. But just make it try and make it as good as they can? No, no, not as good uh, as they can. Make, but, but let's call it a bit more self aware. Yeah. A uh-huh. bit more self aware yeah. of what's Turn going on. Turn it into a comedy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, that yeah. is what it is ripe for. Yeah. Oh, my just God. Just imagine, you know, Colin Trevorrow wakes up, uh, you know, the. The Friday morning of the premiere of Jurassic World to a thousand text messages and news from like LA Weekly or Variety that his movie is going to open to like the greatest opening of all time and mm-hmm. become the biggest movie ever. And he's like, oh my God, my life has changed. Spends the mm-hmm. weekend partying like a motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Goes back to his whatever studio apartment on Monday and his agent calls him and he goes, You've got a pile of scripts, Colin. <laughs> you can pick whatever you want. 
Yep. And he hands them over all these scripts, which I imagine are movies that have been made over yep. the past couple of years. Movies yep. that are probably very good mm. and ended up quite good. And he's and he singled out the fucking book of Henry, dude. <laughs> he looked at the thing and was like, you know what? This is the story that Time needs to be told. Time for my passion project. <laughs> <laughs> Woof. Uh, Before I dive headlong into another meat grinder corporate movie. Yeah, but the thing is, like at this point, like Colin, Colin Trevorrow is he is a he's a poker chip. He's a penny stock. He's just a, he's a penny stock that they invested in. They they managed to inflate so that you know some agents and some studio they could make some money, and he gets he gets a uh, Jurassic World. Jurassic World outperformed by, even by being a garbage fucking movie outperformed anybody's expectations due to the fact that over the course of that time I think the combination of factors that 90s nostalgia is proving to be really potent right now as well as Chris Pratt's stardom is proving to be exceptionally potent right now those two things made for a billion dollar movie and not letting that opportunity go to waste within uh, a, a very short amount of time of that thing blowing the world up financially Financially, it was announced that he would be uh, directing Star Wars Episode Nine. So, some a smart agent was able to make some moves and was able to cash out on a really expensive penny stock that was inflated for a minute. Nailed it. Yeah. Um, all right. So, a couple things to really quickly work through before we get into whatever new reviews we may have. Mm. Uh, we He's the Forrest Gump of directors. That's what I was trying to. There uh, you go. We mentioned 